they're not authentic and they may not even be Singaporean. But today I'm going to show you how to make this colorful and delicious noodle stir fry. So stick around. Welcome back to No Recipes. I'm Mark Matsumoto and I'm here to show you how to elevate your everyday meals. So hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out. I grew up in a small American town that had only two Chinese restaurants. And although I didn't realize it at the time, what they were serving wasn't actually Chinese food. After finding out that it was all a big lie, I spent about a decade avoiding these sorts of restaurants until I realized that although they weren't authentically Chinese, they were an authentic part of the Chinese American experience in the same way that California rolls or beef teriyaki reflect the Japanese American experience. In the case of Singapore noodles, it most likely evolved from a dish called Sing Sao Bi Hun, which is a stir-fried rice vermicelli dish that actually exists in Singapore. One of the main differences is that there's no curry powder in the original. The thing is, I really love the flavor and the color that it adds to the noodles. So I'm going to be making the unauthentic Singapore noodles I grew up eating today. Let's have a look at some of our ingredients. Like any good noodle stir fry, this one starts with plenty of oil and a few eggs. For our protein, we're going to be using 130 grams of medium-sized shrimp that have been peeled and deveined, as well as 130 grams of pork. We're going to marinate these with 2 teaspoons of soy sauce, 2 teaspoons of Shaoxing wine, and 1 teaspoon of potato starch. For the sauce, we're going to be using 3 quarters of a cup of chicken stock, 2 tablespoons of fish sauce, and 1 tablespoon of oyster sauce. For our stir fry, we've got 2 tablespoons of vegetable oil, a very large clove of garlic, an equal amount of ginger, half a red bell pepper, half a green bell pepper, half an onion, 140 grams of julienne bamboo shoots, 110 grams of bean sprouts, some scallions, and two tablespoons of curry powder. Last but not least, we need 160 grams of rice vermicelli. It's a very thin noodle that comes dried in bundles like this, and it's also sometimes called bihun or mai fan. The first thing you want to do is put the noodles in a bowl and cover them with boiling water. Use chopsticks or two forks to start separating the noodles so they don't stick together. Once they're no longer brittle, go ahead and drain them and rinse them under cold water. Bihun is the thinnest rice noodle, but other kinds of rice noodles will work for this as well. Now you want to put the noodles back into the bowl and cover it with cold water. This finishes rehydrating them and keeps them from sticking together while we prep the rest of the ingredients. For the pork, I'm going to slice them up and then cut the slices into strips. Mine came pre-sliced, but if yours comes in a block, just cut it up into slices first. For the shrimp, I have a separate tutorial on prepping them, including a trick to give your shrimp a wonderful snap. I'll link to it in the description below, so go check it out if you want to know more. Now I'm going to add the pork and cleaned shrimp to a bowl and pour in the Shaoxing wine and soy sauce. I'm going to mix this together once to make sure the seasonings are well distributed. Then I'm going to add the potato starch and mix it together really well. The starch helps the shrimp and pork hold on to their moisture when we stir fry them, which keeps them from getting chewy. For the sauce, I've got a bowl of chicken stock that I'm going to add the fish sauce and oyster sauce to. Then I'm going to stir this together until the ingredients are well combined. For the eggs, just break them into a bowl and lightly beat them. Now let's prep the veggies. The garlic's going to get whacked, peeled, and chopped. Nothing new here. For the ginger, use a spoon to peel it. It's the best way to get into all the nooks and crannies without wasting a bunch of ginger. We're going to slice that up. 
Chop the slices into threads and then mince the threads up. For the onion, I'm gonna trim the top and the bottom off and peel away the papery skin. Then I'm gonna slice it up into pieces that are about an eighth of an inch thick. Nothing fancy here, but you wanna make sure you remove the bits of stem that are holding all the pieces together so you can separate the onions, kinda like this. For the red bell pepper, I'm gonna remove the core and then trim off any light colored membranes like this. Then I'm gonna cut it into wedges and then slice it up so the pieces are about the same size as the onions. Same deal for the green ones. You can usually tell where the membranes are by looking for the creases in the pepper. By slicing along the crease, the membranes end up being at the edge so they're easier to remove. Now I'm just gonna slice these up so they're about the same size as the onions. Finally, we're gonna chop up the scallions. These guys are really small, so I'm gonna chop the whites with the greens. But if your scallions are thick, you may wanna just stick to the greens. Okay, we're almost ready to start cooking, but first, let's drain the noodles. I've got a large frying pan over high heat, and I'm gonna add two teaspoons of vegetable oil. Then I'm gonna pour the eggs in and scramble them quickly, breaking them up into small chunks. You want them to be fully cooked, but you don't want to make them tough and dry. This looks about right, so let's transfer them out of the pan. Back on the heat, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of vegetable oil to the pan, along with the ginger and garlic. Stir that around to infuse the oil with flavor. We want the mixture to be fragrant, but we don't want the garlic to brown just yet. That's smelling good. So let's get our proteins in there. Spread the pork and shrimp into a single layer and then let it fry undisturbed until it's cooked about halfway through. Now let's give it a toss to flip everything over. You can go back in and flip the ones you missed by hand. Let's give that a few more tosses. Okay, once the pork and shrimp are mostly cooked through, go ahead and add the peppers, onions, bean sprouts, and bamboo shoots. Now you want to stir fry the mixture until the bean sprouts start to wilt and turn translucent. I find that a mixture of tossing and stirring works best here, but you do whatever works for you. The goal is to keep everything moving around the pan so they cook through evenly. Now I'm gonna dust the curry powder evenly over the veggies. Make sure you don't just dump it in or it's gonna clump up. Then you wanna continue to stir fry the mixture until the curry powder is fragrant and the vegetables are cooked but still crisp. Now I'm gonna return the eggs to the pan and add the rice noodles. Then I'm gonna pour the sauce over everything. It'll look a bit soupy at first, but don't worry. The noodles will absorb the liquid as they cook and it keeps them from clumping together. I usually use a pair of chopsticks or tongs with a spatula to toss the noodles like I'm tossing a salad. Okay, the liquid is mostly gone and the noodles are uniform in color. So let's get this plated up. The rainbow of colors and textures makes this dish pretty stunning, but it's the aroma that's truly drool-worthy. As you can see, there are a lot of veggies, meat, and shrimp relative to the noodles, which is how I like it. Be sure to get a good mix as you're plating it up. Let's finish this off with some chopped scallions, and our Singapore noodles are done. The pork and shrimp are plump and juicy thanks to the starch in the marinade, and the veggies provide a wealth of contrasting textures that keeps this dish interesting to the last bite. But the thing that really makes this dish for me is the curry powder. The stir fry only takes about five minutes to cook, but it smells like a pot of curry that's been simmering away for hours. These Singapore noodles are a complete meal on their own, 
but they also make for a great side for other Chinese American favorites like orange chicken. I'll link to the video for that in the end screen, so stick around for that. One last thing I want to mention is that these are best when eaten hot and fresh, but they're still delicious after they've cooled, which makes them a great entree for a bento box lunch. Singapore noodles may not be authentic, but they are delicious. So I hope you'll give them a try. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know you want to see more like it by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing it with all your friends that love Chinese American food. You know, these videos wouldn't be possible without my amazing patrons on Patreon who help support these videos. If you're learning something new from my recipes, I hope you'll consider clicking the link up here to join the No Recipes crew and help fund our future videos. You'll have to forgive me for cutting the outro short, but these Singapore noodles smell amazing and I'm starving. So I'll catch you in the next one. Check us out on Instagram at No Recipes.